This is our cup. The January sun streamed mercilessly through the open window at 7 a.m. of the 7th floor apartment of Ashok Srinivasan in Mailapur. They say there are principally three types of weather in Chennai. Hot, hotter, hottest. While it was still mildly cold in other parts of the country, the temperatures were already soaring high in Chennai. In tandem to the temperature outside, the mercury levels of the Ashok Srinivasan's house inside was also picking up. Well, there were two reasons for this. The first one being Ashok Srinivasan's mother Savitri was visiting her son and her grandson, three-year-old Vijay, to celebrate the Pongal festival. She had painstakingly made chaklis and undes and kodbalis for her son and grandson. Well, her relationship with her daughter-in-law was cold at best and hostile at worst. She never approved of her daughter-in-law Rama, who came from a Delhi brought-up background. Well, that day, in the household of Ashok Srinivasan, the environment was getting hotter and hotter by the minute. The second reason why this was happening is because the maid had taken holiday and eventually announced that she would quit her job. So poor Rama had taken off from work, was taking care of their three-year-old son Vijay, doing the household, cooking, cleaning, everything and she was pretty mad and upset herself. In middle of all the commotion, Ashok Srinivasan picked up the newspaper, The Hindu, the daily diet of news in the city. As he flapped the paper open, he realized the paper reading goes best with a hot filter coffee from Mailapur. He looked towards the kitchen and said, Rama, uh, my coffee dear. Suddenly a hand came from nowhere and banged a cup of steel glass on the table. Ashok Srinivasan looked up at his wife. She was breathing heavily, hands on her hips and eyes burning hot. Well, there is a sport in Chennai called Jali Kattu. Uh, this is a bull taming sport, popular during the Pongal festival. Just like the Spanish sport that all of us have heard, here the bull fighting takes place and this is exactly the trepidation that Ashok Srinivasan saw in his wife's eyes, ready to charge. <laughs> My dear, uh, don't worry, everything will be all right. We have contacted uh, the agency for help. Uh, we have even told the neighbors, the security guard. Soon we will find a maid, don't worry, said Ashok Srinivasan. Rama, who was just, just ready to fight, got so angry. Everything will be all right? You think everything will be all right? I, I have taken leave and I'm taking care of the house, cleaning, sweeping, mopping. On top of it, now your mother has also come here. At this time, Savitri, who was sitting near the puja room, beautifully decorating it with kolam, along with her three-year-old grandson Vijay, wiped her hand to her sari and came storming towards Ashok and said, Ashok, eh? this is exactly why I told you. Never get married to city girls. You should never let your wife go to work. Uh, see, uh, she has no respect for elders. She has no respect for husband. That time, the daughter-in-law and the mother locked their eyes, just waiting for the other one who would start take an advance for the fight. Just then, there was a doorbell. Everybody stopped where they were and they looked at the door. Well, nobody was expected at 7 a.m. in the morning, but today, this doorbell was so welcome. Rama retreated and she walked straight to the door and opened the door. At the door, she saw an enormous lady dressed in an ill-fitting crimson red cotton sari with a huge bindi, flower in her hair, bangles in her hand. Uh, uh, she looked just like the eunuchs that we find uh, at the signals uh, begging for money. Amma said the lady in a very manly voice. Amma, I am sorry to disturb you. 
I just heard the security uh, tell somebody that you are looking for a maid to take care of your son and all the household work, Amma. Uh, if the job is not filled up, can you can you please give this job to me, Amma? Said the voice. Rama looked in confusion. Amma, uh, you you should give us job, Amma. Otherwise. We will end up we will end up begging outside on the streets and probably get into prostitution or sex workers. If you give us job, we will be in the mainstream, Amma, said this voice. At that minute, Savitri got up and came towards the door and started screaming, Ayo, Ayo, Karavali, look at this creature. Close the door. She looks like a witch. Rama, come this side. Party, I am not a witch, Party. I was born as a boy. In a small village, we were from a very poor family. My father used to drink, beat my mother and he threw her away. My mother came to the city and she became a sex worker herself. The hoodlums castrated me and put me to begging. You could see pain in her eyes. Papi, now I am Santoshi. Rama looked at this lady and said, uh, Where do you live? Akka. Akka, I, I live, I live uh, in the slums beneath the Kotupuram Bridge," said Santoshi. <gasps> "Ayo, yo, yo!" screamed Savitri. "Ashok, hey, come here, do something. She is doing black magic. Look how she is, uh, she's, she's taking over Rama. Look how Rama is talking to her. Come here, Ashok!" Hey, screamed Savitri. Ashok realized in all the commotion there is no way that he can read the newspaper. He kept it aside and walked towards the door followed by his three-year-old son crawling next to him. Rama, stop all this nonsense. Uh, give that creature a, a, an old sari and some money. It is festival season and, and send her away. You are not thinking of employing her, are you? What will the neighbours think about us? What will our family and friends talk about us? Um, haven't you heard of kidnapping and all of that? Rama, think from your head, not your heart, said Ashok. At this time, Rama said, Ashok, it's not a creature. Didn't you hear? She said her name was Santoshi. In the middle of all this, Rama started arguing. So did Ashok. Savitri was screaming that this was the witch who was taking over and all three of them were in an argument. Suddenly, ah! screamed Rama. Their three-year-old child was missing. They looked out of the window. Santoshi was not there. Savitri screamed and said, Ayo, I knew this was going to happen and she crushed and fell down on the floor crying. Ashok stepped out of the door. He said, Amma, close the door. Uh, Rama, you take, uh, you take the lift. You take the other lift that's going down. I'll take the steps. Let's go down immediately. And they rushed to the ground floor. Only to see that there was nobody there. Ashok and Rama ran towards the gate and the gate was open and the security person was missing. Rama's hands were shivering. She could hardly, barely keep her feet on the ground. Her heart was pounding, tears rolling down her cheeks. Ashok, Ashok, what has happened? Ashok, let's, let's call the police. Come Rama, we, we will do that, said Ashok. As they rushed back, took the elevator and rushed back to the seventh floor and as soon as the elevator opened, there, outside their house, Santoshi was sitting. On her lap was their three-year-old son Vijay who was playing with Santoshi's glass bangles and smiling. Rama didn't know what to do. She quickly went and tried to pull her child who refused to come. How could you? What have you? Why did you do this? Screamed Rama. Akka, Akka, let me explain, said Santoshi. She got up still holding Vijay close to her on her hips. She said, Akka, while the three of you were talking, I saw the child crawl out of the house and he immediately got into the elevator and it closed, Akka. I didn't know what to do. I rushed, I took the steps and I came down. The elevator opened in the third floor and the child came out, Akka. I was scared he might fall down from the steps. I picked him up immediately and I came up and I even, even rang the doorbell, but nobody opened it. So I just sat here waiting for you, Akka said Santoshi. <sighs> Ashok and Rama looked at each other. Ashok smiled and he told his wife, Rama, you think you have found your new nanny?
Rama smiled at Santoshi and said, uh, Santoshi, come inside. Let us discuss your terms of employment. Will you? Santoshi smiled at this and she was still holding Vijay in her arms as they stepped inside the house. Rama said in a loud voice, Santoshi, it is not always that you have to take decisions from your head. Sometimes best decisions are taken from your heart. Otherwise, do you think I would have married into this household? <laughs> Smiled Rama and Santoshi had a big smile on her face. Program was brought to you by Akashwani Bengaluru.